Okay, 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 I'll stop. After this one, this is the last one. Connor Bedard is phenomenal. And I've been saying that the past, like, year and a half, maybe two years? I don't know, we've been talking about Bedard for ages, even though two years ago he actually would have been a preteen, I think. Um, does that work properly? I'm not sure. But... Connor Bedard is making the news once more because his WHL season has come to an end. Yeah, it started up so quickly and it ended off even quicker. It's kind of bittersweet, isn't it, that Connor Bedard, who has been so good in the WHL, is going to the part to WHL for now because Connor Bedard is off to Team Canada to prepare for the U18 Championships. Which, I actually remember, there was a lot of controversy as to whether or not Bedard would be good enough to qualify for that team, but I mean, take a look at the guy. He's probably going to be good enough for that team, so yeah, this is going to be deserving for him. And for Connor Bedard last night, he was a guy out on a mission, because if you take a look at how Connor Bedard finished up his 2020-2021 year, Sure, he had the two points in the one game played for the JV71 Junior 18 team. What's going on, by the way, to our folks in Sweden? We do have a lot of fans here that pop into our streams once in a while that do indeed cheer for HV71, and they talk about how unfortunate it has been that the relegation process has kicked in for that hockey team. But yeah, for JV71 Junior 20 team, Connor Bedard had two points in one game. He had four points in four games against EU20 competition, but... In the WHL, in yesterday's Regina Pats victory over the Brandon Wheat Kings, Connor Bedard scored a goal. It was a very good goal where the guy takes the loose puck out in front, puts it out to the side, and uses the brand new angle to score into the open cage. And he also scored the overtime winner too. It was a 2-1 Regina victory, and Connor Bedard, just a few days after his grandfather Garth unfortunately passed away from a car accident, he scores the overtime goal for his grandfather, and you can see the celly, you can see the emotion. It is just really impactful to see how things transpired on the ice there for Bedard. But with the two-goal performance and the Regina Pats ending off what is Connor Bedard's triumph over the WHL, he wraps up this year with 28 points in 15 games played, which is almost two points a game. It's almost two. It's straight up almost two. Two points per game, dude! Shall I repeat that for you? A 15-year-old has finished up his first year in the WHL, probably the most physical and defensively demanding junior hockey league in the CHL amongst the OHL and the QMJHL, and he has gotten two points a game at 15. Ah yeah, this is crazy, dude! absolutely crazy just to see how things wrapped up. And I know some people are going to be wondering, oh, why is he actually leaving, though? I mean, the U18s, they're not going to be here for a while, so why is he out now? Well, it's because the U18s is going to have to join the team in Texas, and it looks like he's actually going to spend some time with his family while quarantining as well, which is more than okay in a situation like this. So I, for one, of course, hope that him and his family are able to cope up and just spend some time together, you know, because that's kind of what you need in a moment like this. But... He's going to spend time with his folks, he's going to quarantine for the U18s, and when he gets back in action, we will see whether or not he makes Team Canada, which I think he's probably going to. I mean, any of the other guys that would be eligible, Connor Bedard has probably outscored already. So, yeah, he's probably going to be in that conversation. But I just wanted to go over some of the historical data as to how exactly this season is because obviously 28 points in 15 games played is really gosh darn good but just how good is it let's go over the whl right now Connor Bedard is still first in points. There are only a handful of players that have a higher points per game than Connor Bedard this season in the WHL. One of them is Peyton Krebs. He's got 27 points in 14 games, so one fewer point, but in one fewer game, the points per game aligns with him more. You have Justin Sordiff, a Vancouver Giants guy, 12 points, 6 games, phenomenal. And teammate Tristan Nielsen, 13 points in 6 games, not to mention Dylan Gunther, 2021 draft eligible prospect at a flat. 2 points a game, 12 goals, 12 assists, 24 points in 12 games. Very nice, even stat line. He's actually tied with Bedard for first in the league in goals, as well as Carson Denomi, also on the Regina Pats, which is really interesting to see. But, of course, the fact that Bedard is only 15 is 
the outlier here. The fact that all these other guys, Genther, he's U18, so he's a guy who is also going to be probably considered for that Team Canada squad. But if you want to go back through the historical data of the WHL and search amongst guys from 2000 until now by points per game, and you classify it to only U18 players, man, things get interesting. Because amongst all U18 WHLers from 99 until now, Connor Bedard has the second highest points per game, behind Dylan Gunther, who this year has two, which, I mean, we already spoke about that. Gunther, he's doing really well. Of course, he is going to be a great prospect, too. The fact that Bedard is a few years younger than him, though, is significant. You also have Logan Stankoven, who is going to be drafted this year as well. He's third on the list, so it's actually kind of interesting how Gunther and Stankoven and both have higher points per games than, for example, Kirby Doc when Kirby Doc was drafted and Kirby Doc was drafted third overall. Dylan Cousins is over here with a 1.24 points per game, and we remember how good he was at the draft in terms of his overall draft stock. But the WHL from the year 2000 until now, they've never really had that number one bona fide guy that became an absolute superstar in the NHL. I mean, look, Evander Kane is all right. Nugent Hopkins, pretty good. Nolan Patrick, pretty good too. Jordan Wheel, amazing. You also have some other guys here. Scott Hartnell, of course. Kyler Yamamoto is looking to be a star. We'll see what happens with Dylan Cousins. Brendan Gallagher's in here too, but all these guys, when they were 17, some of them 16, some just under 18, none of them produced as much as 15-year-old Connor Bedard. Bedard is looking to be, to the WHL, what John Tavares and what Connor McDavid were to the OHL, and what... I don't know, Alexi Lafreniere is looking to be for the QMJHL, if he does pan out the way that we want him to. And it's so nutty, because if you change this thing that we're looking at here from U18 to U17, Connor Bedard is first by a long shot. Take a look at all these other WHL guys when they were 16. Peyton Krebs was out here as a point-per-game player. Six points, six games. Dylan Genther was a point-per-game player, too. Ryan Nugent Hopkins was barely over. Braden Shen was over here, and so was Nolan Patrick. But Connor Bedard almost has two points a game, and he's younger than these guys in this classification. In fact, if you change it to the OHL, Connor Bedard would be second to John Tavares, who was a solid two points a game when he was... 16 years old, so he was actually a little bit older than Bedard when he put up this crazy season, but Connor McDavid, 2013-14, he was 16, 99 points, 56 games played, Bedard at 15 is outscoring him still. And the WHL is no joke of a league. Sure, the OHL might have more star power, might have more talent, might be a lot better in general, but the WHL, it's a lot tougher, I would think. It's more physical, it's more defensively oriented, and it makes it a lot harder if you're a small 5, 10, 15-year-old guy just trying to make a name for himself in the hockey world. And for Connor Bedard, man, just seeing the names here. Steven Stamkos, when he was 16, had 1.46 points per game. Taylor Hall, a 1.3. And the pattern repeats itself. Bedard has a higher production rate at a younger age than these guys did in the OHL. So I don't know what other statistics we can use. Stamkos, Taylor Hall, Tavares. Yeah, I know I said Tavares' two-point-per-game season was crazy, but that was when he was 16. When he was 15, like Connor Bedard, he didn't produce nearly as much. 1.18 points per game with Oshawa. So yeah, I mean, Bedard, eh? It's gonna be great gonna be real, real good in the National Hockey League, we're hoping, because if he's not, then man, something would really have to go wrong for Connor Bedard to not pan out, because the way the historical development has gone, there's been nobody, nobody, even among stars in the NHL today, to be as good as Connor Bedard is now in the Canadian Hockey League. He's still outscoring Connor McDavid, isn't he? So, Talk to me in the comments what you think. I know this is a crazy video, but it's the last one we're going to make for a while because Bedard is going to take some time off. He's going to quarantine. He's going to go over to the U18s, and he's going to do his thing over there. Once we see Bedard in his 16-year-old year in the WHL, that's when I think things are going to get really, really crazy. He's already leading the league in points now. What more when he's 16? But for now, talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this Mr. Ash Rolls 9 And... Bye.